letting go of some of the pieces that have been here in the Nets organization for a while, even before I got here. Um, you know, it was going to be hard regardless. I um, mean, it's just the nature of the business. We're all brothers still, you know, so we're just moving on into the next phase of just developing as a team and just building some camaraderie, camaraderie and having fun. Can you shed some light on what the last couple of weeks have been like for you and the time you needed off? Um, it's a lot of family and personal stuff going on. So just want to leave it at that. Otis Livingston, CBS, New York. Hey, Kyrie, uh, welcome back. Um, as you look at the makeup of the team and how successful they have been, how do you see yourself fitting back in? Um, because you had a, obviously a huge role before, now coupled with James Harden in the mix. Like I said, it's just really exciting, you know, just to be able to play with great players that have, you know, just been here in the league for a while, have been through ups and downs, the peaks and valleys. So, you know, James is 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 aligned with us in terms of just experience and, um, you know, adding that to our locker room is, is going to be great for us. Malika Andrews, ESPN. Hi, Kyrie. I, I'm wondering if you were aware that you had violated the health and safety protocols and what that process was like for you in coming back and going through that investigation, one, and then secondly, what your communication was like with the team while you were away. Happy to be back. Happy to be around these guys, address the team, address everybody that needed to be addressed. Now it's time to move on. Bruce Beck. Health and safety friend. I'm sorry, Malika, go ahead. I just was circling back on the health and safety front. Happy to be back. Thank you. Bruce Beck, NBC New York. Kyrie, how supportive have your teammates and the organization been during this time? It's been great. It's been enough support for me to, uh, you know, feel like they have my back. And, you know, that's all I can ask for. You know, the support not only me, but my family. You know, I'm a hometown kid, so, you know, things hit a little different when, um, you know, family or personal stuff going on, and that's up to me to handle that as a, as a man. Um, but, yeah, I just take full accountability for my absence with the guys and, you know, just had a conversation with each one of them, and we move on. Chris, Christian Winfield, New York Daily News. Hey, Kyrie, just wanted to ask, you know, on a mental, maybe spiritual, emotional, even physical front, is, is everything okay with you? Greg Logan, Newsday. Uh, Kyrie, uh, there was a report uh, yesterday that uh, you had purchased a house for George Floyd's family, which would be obviously a magnificent gesture. Can you confirm that and discuss what went into your thinking on that? It was a team effort. You know, just want to keep continue to fulfill our purpose in serving um, a lot of the underserved communities, those don't necessarily get, um, you know, the same attention from just others around. So just trying to do my part. Selfless service, that's all. Alex Schiffer, The Athletic. Hey, Kyrie, welcome back. While you were away, were you able to regularly work out? And, and if so, did you have access to a gym or was it home workouts? Just what, what was your conditioning like while you were away? No, it's just at home, man. Just working out. Brian Mahoney, Associated Press. Hey, Kyrie. Um, you know, a lot of stuff has obviously happened in the world the last couple of years. Uh, has anything that's gone on any uh, made you change your commitment to basketball at all, minimize the importance of it? It's just a separation between what's going on here, um, you know, when I'm playing professionally and what's going on out in the world. And if you don't create that distinction, then it's easy to feel the weight of the world um, while you're going out there and playing. So, you know, I would be lying sitting here and saying I don't feel what's going on in the world and nor am I paying attention to it. Um, you know, I just have a huge responsibility, I feel, to continue to serve my community and the underserved. And, you know, when I'm out here playing, it's continuing to leave knowledge with these guys and, and commit to something, like I always say, bigger than ourselves. You know, this 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 team environment here, um, or just in basketball in general, it takes sacrifice and compromise. You know, and we got to come to an agreement and just stand balanced throughout this long journey. So that's all. That's all I'm trying to do. Ian Begley, SNY. 
hey, Kyrie, I, I know that you know you said that why you were out was a personal matter, and you're just leaving it at that. But I'm just curious, like for the the net fan out there who you know was living and dying with you guys and wasn't sure why you were not playing and was frustrated by that. You know, would you have any explanation to that? Those fans, that fan. Well, the beautiful thing about that is that I started off as a fanatic and I started off as a fan. I've been invested in this organization since I was a kid, you know, and also now that I'm in this role as a player, there is quite a difference. And, you know, the fans out there want to apologize to them as well. You know, my commitment has always been to bring in something special to Brooklyn. You know, it wasn't just a championship. It was unity, it was equality. It was just bigger things than just the game itself. You know, it took quite a while and quite a few um, valleys to get back home initially, you know. Um, so for, for me, I'm just taking every day, you know, just being grateful, you know. Um, but for the casual or the fanatic, you know, it's, it's part of our culture. And, you know, I'm back. I'm happy to be back. And we got some great pieces and we just move on. And I let my actions and my game speak for itself like I planned on doing, you know, just needed a pause. Barbara Barker, Newsday. All right, we'll move on back to Greg Logan with Newsday. Uh, Kyrie, uh, two things. You know, we know that uh, politically and socially, the con country has been fractured the last four years. Uh, what do you hope happens after this inauguration tomorrow? And also, secondly, do you feel like you can still find your, your joy uh, playing basketball? thing that is, you know, pretty interesting in watching when you take a break from everything, there's just so many assumptions about what's going on. And so many people feel like they know me best. They have no idea who I am nor what I'm about or what I stand for, or even attempt to take the time or even for me to invite them to take the time. So it's a two way street. Um, and when things become overwhelming in life, you know, you just got to take a step back and realize what's important. And I love to play. It's never been questioned. I've committed myself, you know, when this wasn't even a thing for me. You know, I didn't really care about media, didn't really care about the fandom. All I cared about was just the ethics of the game and being taught the fundamentals. And now that it's become bigger and there's more of a responsibility that I have in this position I'm in, I'm grateful because I'm able to stand on this platform with others alongside of me that have sacrificed and are going through similar things. So I'm not alone in this. And, um, you know, that's just a big thing about also mental health, you know, just coming in and being balanced with yourself first and then being able to perform. Um, so, you know, with everything going on in the world, politically, um, socially, it, it, like I said, it's hard to ignore. Um, I want to make changes daily. You know, there are so many oppressed communities, so many things going on that are bigger than just a ball going in the rim. Um, so for me, I, I just, like I said, it's just the balance of it. Um, of knowing I can delegate my responsibilities uh, off the court to people that I'm surrounded around that are for the fight and are fighting behind the scenes and in front in the, in the lines. And, you know, like I said, I'm not the only one that's fighting. So I'm grateful to unify with others. And um, that's all I've tried to do. And on the court, the same way, just play with a smile, leave something that I've uh, felt very dear to my heart with this game. And then, you know, whatever my legacy is after that as a person, that, that's all I really care about. It's good. Fascinating. Many topics covered there with Kyrie Irving. Mm -hmm. Some answers he decided to give. Not too much when it came to the violations of the COVID protocol rules, etc. But hey, the good news is, is that Kyrie Irving practiced and now he's expected to be back tomorrow night and Friday night when the Brooklyn Nets are in Cleveland. And this team is going to have no shortage of late options, late game options when they've got all three together. Over the last 10 years, those players rank among the top four in the NBA and usage rate in clutch time and usage rate measures the amount of, the, of plays the player took either a shot, turned it over, or went to the free throw line. So, so this team is stacked. And now let's see if they can put it all together, Jay. Let's see. So it's coming up. The Chiefs play the waiting game with Patrick Mahomes. How their prep for the AFC Championship game will be effective as they wait to see if their MVP can play.
and concussion protocol. Plus, ahead of this weekend's UFC 257, Stephen A. Smith.